Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good evening. Uh, good morning, based on where you are in the world. Uh, good night. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. It is time for another even of Bible study and going through the word. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As you will know, for those who are with us for a number of weeks and for those who are just viewing, we are coming from the Pentecostal City Mission headquarters. This is a broadcast uh, produced by the Pentecostal City Mission Church headquarters. Our pastor is Bishop Marcia Gale. She is the pastor of the church and she is the regional overseer for the island of Jamaica. Our international overseer is Bishop Donald Maxwell. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speaking to you, um, Deacon Cecil Wade. Good evening, everyone. The Lord bless you. Thank you for viewing. I greet you wherever you are. Those of you in Jamaica, from all the 14 parishes, those who are watching, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those who are in the Caribbean, uh, we have persons in, I'm aware, from the Cayman Islands, from Trinidad and Tobago, uh, and maybe other small islands are coming in. I, I greet you in Jesus' name. All of you who are watching in the United States of America, I greet you in Jesus' name. All those who are in Canada, I greet you in Jesus' name. Those in the UK, accept special greetings in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you all. We are here for another day of word impartation and word impact. And uh, of a truth, the Lord is going to speak to somebody this evening. Expect an encounter. I invite you to get your family together, call a friend, hit up somebody, tell them to come on this live because there is a word from the Lord for you. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. And before this evening, we have a special guest and it promises to be another powerful evening. But before I turn over to my guest, I would like to just read for you a portion of scripture. I am aware of that which is, the, the, the entire world is aware, as a matter of fact, of that which is taking place in the United States of America, all the turmoil. In the midst of that, we are in uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Um, there is rumors of war there is turmoil there is chaos but i want to read us a, a portion of scripture uh for us as the believers the children of god and it's taken from the book of acts chapter 17 acts chapter 17 and i'll be reading from verse 24 to verse 31 acts 17 verse 24 to verse 31 it says god that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Yes, he said it, his word said it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. Verse 25 says, neither is worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things and verse 26 is so profound and so applicable and so right to remind us in this time especially that we are going through in this time of uh racism and other schisms and classism and all these things the bible says in acts 17 26 that he hath made of one blood all nations of men 
for to dwell on the face of the earth. And he hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. He hath made of one blood all nations. He hath made of one blood all blacks, all whites, all Chinese, all Indians, all Europeans, whatever is your ethnicity. The Bible says he hath made of one blood all nations. Let me declare tonight that racism is a spirit. It's an evil spirit that is controlling the minds of certain people. And we take authority on this broadcast and we rebuke, we bind that spirit of racism that would like to pull humanity apart. We rebuke it, we curse it now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the God who made of one blood all nations for to dwell on the face of the earth. He hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of the habitation that they should seek the Lord. All nations, black, white, Indian, Chinese, all nations were made to seek the Lord if happily they might find him. They might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device and the times of this ignorance god winked at but now god commandeth all men everywhere to repent he's commanding all white men to repent all black men repent all chinese repent all indians whatever is your ethnicity is commanding all men everywhere to repent because why is he why is he giving that command the bible says because in verse 31 he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained everything you see going on right now every racism classism every kind of ism there is coming a day that the lord hath appointed that he will judge the world in righteousness by that man, Jesus Christ, whom he hath ordained. Wherefore, he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised them from the dead. Jesus, he came first as a wonderful babe, as the savior of the world, but he's coming back as the judge of the world. Believers, so many things are going on. Let us not be distracted from the, the main goal at hand. I have said, I said it in church on Sunday. I'm saying to you, we are in the departure lounge. Get ready. No man knows that they are the hour. But soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. There's so much more that could be said on this issue, which is going on all over the world. But that will be left for another time. I give God thanks for giving us the privilege. I, I give God thanks for the body of Christ and those he has placed in the body. He said he has given some to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Yes, he, he, he said that to us in Ephesians chapter four. Let me find it so I can say exactly what the word of God says. Yes. Ephesians chapter 4. He said, yes, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We are glad this evening to be joined. 
thank you all of you those who are tuned in i bless you in jesus name on behalf of my pastor bishop marcia gale i bless you i greet you all in the mighty name of jesus christ the lord bless you so this evening we are pleased to be joined by another of the fivefold ministry she is prophetess camille taff brown yes please bring her in on this let's go the stage yes prophetess brown she is a mighty woman of god let me say my apologies i am um, forgot the all the little things for the introduction i forgot those things but um persons who were here on the first live um i don't think they are concerned about that because they are remembering that word that the lord released through you to them so prophetess brown i am going to allow you as we say in jamaica give it the full length to go tonight and deliver thus said the lord as i said before you are speaking to the nations of the world you are speaking to caribbean territories you are speaking to the us of a to canada to the uk um all over jamaica and the people are tuned in because you are a woman of god and you have a word in season so the lord bless you thank you for being with us again tonight and go forward woman of god in jesus name hallelujah Bless you, bless you, bless you. Again, for having me tonight, I want to greet the Holy Spirit. I want to greet our Bishop, Bishop Marcia Gale. And I also want to acknowledge you, Deacon. God bless you. God bless Thank you. you. Thank you. All God the bless persons you. online, accept holy greetings tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether you are saved or unsaved, um, just come on in. Tell somebody to tune in. All right? And it's a privilege to be speaking to you once more. Let us just bow our heads in prayer as I begin. Bless the Lord. Father, we thank you. Oh God, we adore you even now, for there is none like unto you. Mighty God, you are great and greatly to be praised. Oh, you are Prince Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, Robo Shah, mighty God, you're the God even now that sees El Rohi, who is like unto you. Mighty God, we honor you tonight. Oh, God, it's nothing good that we have done, but it's only because of your love, your mercy, and your grace. Why we're still here tonight, and mighty God, tonight we come to lift you up, tonight we come to magnify. Tonight we come to Shabbat, your holy name tonight, Jesus. Oh, you are the ear that we breathe. Mighty God, I pray even now that God's souls will be delivered, souls will be set free. I pray, oh God, that a backslider will return home. I pray that a wounded heart, oh God, will be mended. I pray that a broken spirit, oh God, will be healed by the touch of your hand, oh Oh God, I pray even now, Holy Spirit, uh, that God, you will cover, cover, riba kosata, even now, those that are online, those that are listening, those that are watching, mighty God, I pray that you cover each and every one of us tonight, I pray, mighty God, that your words will come forth with power and with clarity, I pray, even now, mighty God, that the oil and the wine will be poured in a wound tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, and God will lift you up. We tell you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise belongs to you. And we tell you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Somebody just worship the Lord. Oh, just open up your mouths. Begin to send up a worship wherever you are. Just begin to praise him. Oh, let praises rise on the inside of you tonight. Oh, send up a praise in the atmosphere. Because we know that when Zion begins to travail, oh, 
oh, ha, she brings forth. Uh, tonight we come to bless uh, the Holy Lamb of Israel. Uh, tonight we come to bless uh, the God who speaks and it must be done. Uh, the God who commands uh, and his word stands fast. Uh, oh, cherubims and seraphims, uh, they can't help uh, but cry holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The old earth is filled. Oh God, with your glory, mighty God, we just want to love on you tonight. We just want to pour out oh, ourselves before you tonight because God, we know that you're a God tonight that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So tonight, mighty God, we come to bless you. We come to praise you. We come to honor you in no other name mm. oh Jesus but in the name that supersedes every other the name that makes demons tremble Jesus oh we come to love on you tonight daddy because you are worthy. You are worthy. I wish somebody would just send up a praise. I wish somebody would just send up a worship. I wish somebody would just loose the atmosphere with a thanksgiving praise tonight. Uh, it's nothing good that we have done. We should have been cast off. Oh, our soul should have been cast away. But mercy Mercy, 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 mercy. Rewrote our lives tonight. And tonight, God, we come to praise your holy name. Ah, uh, nobody else would have done God but you tonight. And we come not to be known. We come not for fame. We don't have an agenda but to give you glory tonight, Jesus. Be magnified in this house, be magnified in this temple. Oh, we bless your holy name tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We don't have an agenda but to give you all the honor tonight, but to give you all the praises tonight, Jesus, because you are worthy to be praised. Ah, Jesus. Mm, we bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody just worship him with me. Just for 10 more seconds. Oh, send up some hearts. Send up some hearts. And just begin to worship him. And in your house, just raise your hands. And declare that this atmosphere is conducive for worship. Just decree and declare. Oh, that your house is holy ground. And there shall no evil dwell. Somebody just magnify the Lord with me tonight. He's worthy. Mm, he's worthy, Jesus. He's worthy, O oh, Robo Shata. He's worthy, Jesus. He's worthy. Oh, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Mighty God, we thank you. Oh, Robo Koshanda Rarabashe. Jesus, we bless your name tonight. Hallelujah. I am here to continue <laughs> from the topic I did before, the potter's touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good night once more, everyone. Good night in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, we're looking at Jeremiah 18, and I'm just going to read a couple of verses and then we're gonna begin and it reads thus that's jeremiah 18 if you have your bibles wherever you are please open your bibles and it reads thus the word which came to jeremiah from the lord saying arise go down to the potter's house there i will cause thee to hear my words then i went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made was of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. 
Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, said the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good, where it I said I would benefit them. Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus say the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return you know everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. And they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices and we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, ask ye now among the heathen who had heard such things the virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which cometh from the rock of the field? Or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient parts to walk in paths. In a, to walk in paths in a way not cast up, to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will shew them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Bless the Lord. The word of the Lord is already blessed. We honor it by saying, Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. So I am continuing on the topic, the potter's touch. Bless the Lord. Um, when you speak about the potter, the name potter means master. It means master. So we're talking about the master's touch. Bless the Lord. Now, I am continuing from where I left off, and I spoke about why the Lord sent Jeremiah, just a, a refresher, why the Lord sent Jeremiah down to the potter's house. It's because he wanted Jeremiah to get a visual image, a visual image of who he was and how he actually deals with us, his people. He wanted us to see him as the good shepherd. He wanted us to have an idea of him being the husband man. And he also wanted us to see him as our father. Bless the Lord. Now, while Jeremiah was there, the Lord began to reveal to him what really takes place at the potter's house. At the potter's house, Clay is brought there, or clay is in there. But it's only the trained eye of the potter that can determine mud from clay. Stay with me. If the potter sees that the clay is not ready to use, then the clay has to be put outside to weather the storm. Upon the weathering taking place, which is the sun beating on that clay, you will find that if mud is still wrapped up in that clay, 
that the mud stiffens and it becomes hard. What represents the beating of the clay is the trials, the testing, the tribulation, the persecution that you will have to go through or robokoshata. If it is while you're going through this process that your heart becomes hardened, then the potter will see fit to put you back and allow the weathering to take place so that you can become perfection in terms of the clay that is needed to make the vessel. Stay with me. Now, when it comes to mud and clay, it's a description of two types of people that are in the world, that are in the church. You will find that some persons are operating as mud while others are behaving as clay. No, it's not for any of us on here tonight to try and sit and figure out in our minds who is clay and who is mud. That's for the potter to decide. However, you can tell by your actions what is actually manifesting in this time and in this season. Now we're going through a pandemic globally. And I would say somewhat, not globally, but majority of places around the world are protesting, still protesting, because of something that took place, because of someone's life that was taken. Now, bear with me children of God based on what is happening now to you personally in your life you mm -hmm. can tell whether or not it's a manifestation of clay or mud you see your trials didn't come oh Roboko Shata, to destroy you but it came to process you oh Shanamakute for the vessel that God needs you to be. Let me show you something. A vessel that is cracked is not fully destroyed. It just has a crack in it. For some of you, I, I love plants. And... um. My mom loved plants, so I grew up seeing her always keeping plants, you know, always having little flower pots, and, you know, I would go out there to water them, or she would water them. And you would realize that when the pot is cracked, the flower pot is cracked, it doesn't mean that it still cannot hold the plant. Ah, Jesus. I hope somebody's getting this. So tonight, some of us on here may be cracked. But it doesn't mean that you're not still fit to be used. Oh, somebody worship the Lord in this place. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. When mud and clay are in the potter's house. It is not for any of us to decide, okay, you are mud, get out. You are clay, stay. No, no. That's left on to the potter. Stay with me. Just as though he said that when he returns, he will separate the wheat from the tear. Watch me. While I'm speaking even now, some persons are softening up because they're rolling back things in their head. They're looking at their decisions, at their behaviors. They're looking at everything that is concerning their lives. And they're trying to size up 
whether or not at this point in time they are clay or they are mud. Stay with me. Some persons may be feeling angry because you're saying to yourself, what is this that is happening? Why am I now looking at myself in a different light? Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. The potter I'm learning not only uses a shovel to take up the clay. He doesn't only use a shovel to take up the clay. But he also uses an instrument called a mallet. A mallet. What is a mallet? A mallet is what the potter uses after the clay has been cleansed and processed. He puts it on the table to remove the air bubbles out of the clay. Now somebody would ask, why would air bubbles be in the clay? I'm going somewhere. This is what was revealed to me while I was doing this research. If air bubbles are not removed when the clay gets on the potter's wheel, and the potter begins to fashion the clay into a vessel. The clay, the vessel, sorry, will have some weak spots in it. So now you understand why when Jeremiah was watching the potter fashion the clay. And the clay became marred in the potter's hand. Oh, Roboko Sata. Jesus, the potter did not throw the clay away, oh, riba but he began to work on it. Now, I'm going to show you why I'm explaining this. Stay with me. The potter then takes the mallet and he beats the clay with the mallet on the table. So it's like he's punching it. He's hitting hard at it. Because he wants to get the ear bubble out of it. This is when you begin to cry. As a child of God. When the potter takes his mallet. And he begins to pound out. The ear bubbles. That are in the clay. This is when you will have heartbreak. This is when children will disappoint you on the ebakusata, on the table of the potter. Stay with me. This is when family members and friends will disappoint you. Stay with me, church of God. This is when folks lie on you. Oh, you don't hear me in this house. This is when sickness comes up against you. When people begin to criticize and to tear you down, stay with me. When pride begins to take you over and your chest comes too high because you know it all, you've seen it all, you've experienced it all and nobody can direct you, stay with me. This is when the potter has to beat out the ear bubbles that are in you. Because watch me. If the ear bubbles remain in the clay, then the vessel <laughs> will not be fit for the master's use. If you're still carrying around that damage, oh, riba kosende, rebe, bebe, be, kosata, if your ear bubble is still attached unto you. So your father walked out of your life as a child. But you're still carrying that ear bubble. Your mother abandoned you. Or as a child. That's an ear bubble. You may have gone through a divorce. Or been separated. That's an ear bubble. The child that you have invested in has disappointed you and has broken your heart. That's an ear bubble. 
That's a weak spot. Somebody told a lie on you. And you decided that you're leaving church. Because somebody lied on you. That's an ear bubble. That's a weak spot. Let me show you something, church of God. When God decides to use you, especially in ministry, it's good when you can say that, okay, you were broken. But at some point in time, you have to heal. You have to become whole. Wherein you can then begin to help somebody else along the way. Because guess what? You can say, get up, sister. Because I know what you're facing. And I'm here to tell you that God is a resurrector. I'm here to tell you that God, oh, just as he spoke to Ezekiel and said, can these dry bones live? I'm telling your sister that you will live again. I'm telling your brother that you will live again. If you carrying an ear bubble where your spouse has dropped you, disappointed you, broken your spirit and you're still walking around with that ear bubble then you'll end up beginning to damage other people oh jesus i hope i'm helping somebody tonight so you were sent home from your job and you're still angry with your boss that is an ear bubble that you need to let go you were abused as a child. I don't know why the Holy Ghost taking me down this road. But somebody tonight needs to be delivered through the power of the Holy Ghost. I say you will not walk around anymore with that ear bubble. Somebody hurt you along the journey. And now that hurt is being projected onto others. Why? Because you still have that ear bubble. And as long as that ear bubble is in your vessel, then there's a weak spot and you can be broken to pieces. Stay with me. If the vessel has a weak spot, the slightest blow Hey, Jesus. The slightest pressure that takes that vessel, it will fall apart. If weight enters that vessel, it will fall apart because it has a weak spot. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. When there's ear bubble <laughs> in the vessel, you are not ready yet to be used by the potter. He can't use you. He cannot then fashion the clay. He can't mold you. I feel the Holy Ghost. He cannot mold you into the vessel of honor that you should be because you are having ear bubbles in your clay, Jesus Christ. Somebody for too long, you've been carrying the weight hey, of your past. And it's time to ask God to beat out that ear bubble with his mallet. It's one thing when you're testifying about where you have been so that others can see where God has taken you from and how good God is. It's one thing when you're telling people, had it not been, hey God, for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? But it's another thing. 
when you're carrying around this thing for vengeance, to do evil. Church of God, let, let me just let me just stop right here. There is no way that the Holy Ghost would support you. <laughs> Setting up intentionally to hurt someone. I wish somebody hear me tonight. Let it go, says the Holy Ghost. Forgive the one that hurt you. Let go of that ear bubble so that God can mold you into the vessel of honor that he needs you to be. Somebody worship the Lord tonight. Stay with me. Jesus. 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 Oh, ha. I feel the Holy Ghost. Riba baba kosekeya. Rakoto robobo sata. Ramba kutu robobo seheya. Jesus. Somebody praise him in the atmosphere tonight. Stay with me. Grapes <laughs> must first be crushed. To make wine. Diamonds. Oh, Robokoshata. Only can be formed under pressure. Ah, you know what? Talk to me tonight. I said diamonds only come forth from pressure. Somebody don't hear me tonight. Ah, hey, hey. You're going through hell. Ribakoshataya. But God is me kando no mo siya na 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 sukutu rubo siya. God is forming you into diamonds. Eba kuta raba baba say hey Jesus. He's forming the gold that is needed. Stay with me. <laughs> Pictures are only developed in a dark room. Ah, somebody help me tonight. You better send up a worship. I said pictures can only be developed in a dark room. Stay with me. <laughs> Jesus. You may be going through a dark season, but it's not your end. You may be going through a time of hardship. But I'm here to prophesy to some people tonight that it's not your end. Uh, they may have written you off. But God is about to raise Riba Koshata. You obey somebody worship the Lord in this place tonight. Hekutakata. Manda kutu robobo say Jesus. I said pictures are only delivered. Developed in a dark room. In a dark room. You're going through. The word of God says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Hear me very well. Death is darkness. It's a dark place. Some of you have been to death road. Uh, you don't want me prophesying this place tonight. Some of you have been to death road. Hey, ba, ha, ha. Jesus Christ. Hey, when doctors wrote you off, doctors gave you a time frame. But look what the Lord has done. Somebody don't hear me tonight. I say your darkest hour, your midnight hour, your days of sorrow is what God will use to bring you out, to bring you into a place where people will know that it had to be the hand of Almighty God. You don't hear me in this place tonight. Olives. Are pressed, Jesus Christ. 
Oh, somebody pulling on me tonight. Somebody pulling on me tonight, Jesus Christ. Olives are pressed to release oil. Jesus. Hey! Mando robobo saya. Hey! Jesus. Hey! Rokoto. Hey! Rima kosaya. Jesus. Mando robobo saya. Jesus. I said olives are pressed so that oil can come forth. Who? Some of you sitting on some ministries. Oh, Jesus. And God wants you to give birth. Stay with me tonight. Seeds can only grow in darkness. <laughs> I say you are a seed in the hand of God. You are a seed in the hand of God. So some of you right now are going through your dark period. God said to tell you that seeds are only produced, can only grow in darkness. Uh, you're quiet in this house. Somebody better raise up a uh, praise in this place. Uh, you better shout a hallelujah. You better begin to thank God for what you have gone through. You don't hear me in this house. I say you could have been dead, but God. You should have died, but God. They wrote you off, but God. Somebody don't hear me in this place. Mm. <laughs> Some of you, hey, ba 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 ba, di 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 di, beyond the robo bo bo, sata. All sort of witchcraft was worked against you. Oh, you don't want me talk in this place. I don't know who it is, but somebody on this line bothering me. Re be 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 be, sata. I don't know, but I come for some people tonight. Ribo koshende, re be 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 be, sata. Oh, I said, who of your man cannot? Destroy the Lord's anointed. You don't hear me in this house. I don't care where they bury you. I don't care where they plant you. I don't care where they put you. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus is against your works. Hey, makuta tata, rapapapa. Hey, holy ghost. Somebody troubling me. I said, show the blood. 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 I said, show the show the show the the blood of Jesus in this place tonight. Hey, Robo Koshaya. I said, I did expect you to walk. I eat out a rubbish pan. I don't know who I mess with me tonight, but I feel hey. The fire of God. I declare and I declare tonight as a prophet of God. That you shall not die. But you shall live to declare the works of almighty God. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name, hey, 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 hey. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Somebody better worship. Somebody better worship. Somebody better worship. Oh, Jesus. Hey. Somebody said, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon. I don't care where you come from. I don't care where you went. No weapon that is formed against the people of God shall be able to prosper. In the name of Che, hey, na ma 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 shaka, roko to to to, rapapapa, hey, holy ghost, somebody better praise the Lord up in this place, Jesus, 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 hey, somebody missing with me, riba ba ba, hey, send help, holy ghost. Set help, Robocosata. Help, 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 Jesus. Ribo Satuya. Hey, 
Jesus. Somebody better praise the holy Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Jesus. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Robo Kosata. I decree and I declare over you tonight. Rima mama sike ya ruka takata zangu nururubu she ya rikundo rubu that you shall live and not die in the name of Jesus. Mm. <laughs> and everything they do against your skin. Oh, about me tonight, God. Everything they do against your skin, everything they do against your body, everything they do against your children. Reverse, reverse, reverse in the name of Jesus. Hey, 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 Korobobosata in the name of Jesus. Mandurubu I said they're troubling your ministry. Watch God. <laughs> I said it's troubling your church. Watch God. You don't hear me in this house. Mm. <laughs> uh, hey God, hey God, hey God. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody better send up a shout. War cry, war cry, war cry, war cry, war, war, war cry in the name of Jesus. Hey, Robo Sata, Jesus. Hey, Holy Ghost. Mm. We welcome you. 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 We welcome the name of Jesus in this place. Holy Spirit. We thank you. 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 Somebody, I miss up my message. Masukunda na na makoto robo bobo sata. Rima ma 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 sekende. Rebe be 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 kosata. I say whatever padlock. I say whatever they have done to your marriage. Oh, I hear a wife. I hear a wife. I hear. I hear. I hear. Rukata kata kata. Rrr. pa pa pa. Hey. Hey, hey, loose, 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 loose in the name of Jesus. Hey, Holy Ghost. Mm. I hear a wife crying. 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 Oh, riba baba say, hey, Jesus. I declare and I declare tonight. That anyone trespassing on your territory, on your property, because it is written, says God, trespass not against thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's ass, thy neighbor's wife, or anything that is thy neighbor's. So I declare and I declare, let judgment reach every trespasser tonight. Let the hand of judgment, let the hand of judgment, let the hand of judgment, let the hand of judgment be released against every adulterous relationship in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, oh, help God, help. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hey, Korobosa. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Jesus. Mm. Somebody better praise him tonight. Somebody better lift him up tonight. Whoever you have in the hospital, I prophesy healing over that person now. Right now, right now, right now, wherever that person is, whatever sickness, whatever infirmity, whatever infirmity, whatever infirmity, I command it to dry up from the root with all its roots in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every disease in your relative's body, I rebuke it. I rebuke it. I rebuke it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak life. I speak life. I speak life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh God. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, somebody need to show Jesus. You need to show the name of Jesus. You need to show that name. You need to shout. 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 You need to shout the name of Jesus tonight. Oh, Rima Rubusa, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> somebody, somebody, hey, hallelujah, Jesus, I say help is on the way, hey. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, says the voice of God, hold on, my sister, hold on, my brother, your help is on the way. Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. I said, Mommy, don't give up on your son. I said, Mommy, don't give up on your daughter. I said, Daddy, don't give up on your son. I said, take it to God in prayer. I said, take it to God in prayer. I said, a husband bring him before God. There's a courthouse in heaven. I said, there's a courthouse in heaven. You don't hear me in this place. Take out your married ring. Put the pictures before God. Get the marriage certificate. Who am I talking to? Who missed me up tonight, Jesus? I said, put it before God. Runga dunga dey ha. Rakoto robobo shata. Hey, Jesus. And watch God. You don't hear me in this house. I said, there's a courtroom in heaven. You better make your petition known before God. In the name of Jesus. Somebody worship the Lord. 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 I speak victory in your court case. I don't know who you are. But whatever that court case is, whatever that court case is, I speak victory in it right now. I speak victory. I speak victory. I speak victory. I speak victory in the name of Jesus. I pray that the one that enters the courtroom that is about to tell the lie, I say, God, let the tongue cleave to the roof of the mouth. Let confusion take them. And let the judge see the innocent. And see who is telling the lie in the name of Jesus. I said, God, let the spirit of discernment be in that courthouse, be upon that proceeding in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hey God, Jesus. Somebody just missed up my whole message. Oh God, I prophesy tonight that someone will experience a turnaround in 21 days. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what you're bringing before God, but watch the hand of God. 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 I pray by your documents now that your filing will come through. I pray by it right now. I send a fire, a fan to flame, a fan to flame, a fan to flame. The fire of the Holy Ghost over your situation right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, remember the ones. Ebando robo saya rima mama masi kende rebe bebe beko sata. God, I pray even now for favor concerning, concerning, concerning. Ko riba si ende rebe bebe bebe beko sata. That business agreement, God, I pray for divine favor now for such a one in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I release. The spirit of prosperity over your businesses right now. In the name of Jesus, I release a blessing over your household, over your family, over your ministry, over your anointing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that God will favor you. I pray that God will favor you. I pray that God will favor you in your endeavors. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Jesus, I just want to finish this word so that we can the person that is pregnant and the enemy wants your child to die before you give birth i rebuke that spirit now in the name of jesus i say lay your hand on your belly i say you shall give birth you shall give birth you shall give birth your child shall live and not die in the name of jesus I come against the demon of miscarriage. I come against the spirit of miscarriage. I come against the spirit of miscarriage in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And if you're barren, I speak to your womb. I speak to your womb. I speak to your womb. I speak to your womb if you're barren. As I lay my hands, oh, robo shatter, I command your womb to be open. I command your womb, hey, I command, ha, 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 your womb, hey, ko robo shatter, to be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Ribo sutu robo shatter, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. He's worthy to be praised even now. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. <laughs> We thank you, Lord. You are worthy. 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 You are worthy, Jesus. Oh, hey, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. The person with the issue going to the bank. I don't know, I don't know what it is that you have to go into the bank about, but God says it is done. It is done, it is done. It is done, it is done. It is done, it is done. I hear the voice of Almighty God saying, it is done. Favor shall locate you at the bank. Favor, favor. Favor, 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 ha, huh? favor, favor at the bank, favor at the bank, favor at the bank, favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, riba kusundo robobo shata. Church, you just messed up my message. 
but I believe that somebody has gotten their breakthrough. Jesus, Jesus. Watch me, church of God. This is what the Holy Ghost said to me. And I'm really trying to move on. There's a pull. <sighs> of the anointing on me right now. Jesus. Hey, Holy Ghost. There's a pull of the anointing. The Lord said to me that whenever you are feeling crushed. Whenever you are feeling like you're under pressure. Whenever you are feeling pressed in, boxed in, caved in, or like you are in darkness, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Because you're in a place of transformation. You're in a place of birthing. You're in a place of power. You see, whenever time, the pressure gets hard. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You see me laughing, church, you don't have a clue. But when the pressure gets hard, and you feel like you're in darkness. You feel like you're caved in. You feel like you're surrounded. <laughs> There's a song I love to play. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like to the enemy that I'm surrounded. Jesus Christ. But what did Elijah <laughs> say to his servant, Gehazi. When he said Gehazi outside, Gehazi said, Master, we're surrounded. Ah, Jesus Christ. And Elisha prayed. <laughs> and said, God, open his eyes. Open his eyes, God. Open his eyes. Because they that are with us are more than those that are against us. You don't hear me in this place. I say you may feel like you're surrounded. <laughs> you may feel like you're encamped about. God help me in this house. But I'm here to tell you that when you feel that pressure, Jesus Christ, you're in your place of birthing. Can I show you another scripture? That when they came for Jesus, when they came for my master, when they came for my daddy, when they came for my Lord, they surrounded him. They came with batera, baba, bando, robo, bo, shata. They came mm -hmm. with multitude of soldiers. You know what I'm talking at this place? I said they surrounded him. They came with multitudes. They came with armies. And they surrounded him, Jesus Christ. But when they came for him, they got him in his birthing place. <laughs> I'm telling you the revelation that God gave me, Jesus Christ. You see, when they already when they came for him, he had already been on his knees, Jesus Christ. And when we go down on our knees, when warrior hit the ground, when we get on our knees. I said, the battle is already won. <laughs> I said, this is how I fight my battles. Lord Jesus, I said, knee city know me. You know, I'm talking at this place. I said, knee city know me. <laughs> I said, knee city, I'm your friend. I said, knee city is my birthing place. You know, I'm talk to you tonight. I said, when they put you... <laughs> Hey, somebody better shout hallelujah on this live. You better send up a praise. I said, when they put you in that place. In the olden days, can I prove it to you? In the olden days, the women would be placed on the birthing stool. Ah, uh, you don't want to talk to me. Where she look like she's stooping. 
She look like she's stooping down. But it's her birthing place. Ah, Jesus Christ. You don't want me to preach to you tonight. I say when you're in your stooping place. When you're in your kneeling. Hey! When you're in your kneeling place. Jesus Christ. Hey, Holy Ghost. I say you're in your birthing. You're in your birthing. <laughs> you're in your birthing place. Stay with me. So when they came for my daddy, they didn't know that my daddy had already <laughs> been in his birthing place. That when they come for him and I get semony, and them surrounding him, they've done already pray. Uh, when Peter and the rest fast asleep, uh, him did done already pray. When he was in his darkest place, uh, he already prayed. Oh, Jesus. That Elijah came and the angels and they strengthened him. <laughs> Oh, somebody don't want me to talk tonight. Hear me and hear me well. Holy Spirit of God. Now, when you're in this position, get ready. What me say? Me say, get ready. What me say? Me say, get ready. Because God is about to move. You say, church of God, I'm tired. I don't know about you. But I'm tired. <laughs> Of just a mere experience. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I need an encounter. We don't come ah, just to be in his presence. No. We came for an encounter. Do I have somebody on this light tonight that needs an encounter? Hey, with the Holy Ghost. You don't hear me in this place. Somebody worship the Lord of hosts in this place tonight. Watch me. <laughs> the Lord messed with me. And he said, remember when you had Keanu? He said, <laughs> That birth thing comes with pain. I want to talk to the mothers. I hope the mothers are online tonight. I want you to begin to send up some hearts. When you go to give birth, gentlemen, let us tell you. Because you see us in the pain, but you don't have a clue what one. When we go to give birth, <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus. It's the worst pain ever that mankind could ever feel. Nothing else can be compared to that of labor pain. Somebody don't want me to talk tonight. Ah, Jesus Christ. Church of God, I know what I'm talking about. I did 17 and a half hours of labor. One whole day. And then the pain still couldn't burn. So they had to induce me. So imagine me already in a pain because me have contractions. And then you induce pain on me where I come on rapid. Any mother on here want to talk, want to help me tonight? When they start to send on rapid pain, where you're not getting no ease. Oh, Jesus. Where you're not getting a break by time. You say, gee, is another pain hit you? You don't hear me in this place. The Lord said to me, and I had to write it down. He said, baby girl, growth comes with pain. Shut me up right there. I couldn't talk no more. I start ball. Because have you ever been in a place and I want some real people talk to me tonight where you have gone through hell. Going through pain. And you have to stop and ask God, who did I offend up here? You see, you see most pastors won't preach these things because they want it to seem like it's all well. 
and that when we stand in the pulpit, we have it all together. Lie. Lie. You know, I'm going to talk to you tonight. Watch me. The Lord said to me, growth comes with pain. <laughs> Holy Spirit. I, and I, I hope the women are responding tonight, you know. And I hope the men are responding tonight. Hear me well. Growth comes with pain. There cannot be growth without pain. Let me just make that clear. Watch me. When you have a child, the child after they pass the first three months and they start to go going to four, five months, six month old baby. The baby start to what teed. I want the mothers and the fathers here and the fathers that have been like mothers to talk to me tonight, you know. And when that baby start teed and the gum start eat them <laughs> and the gum start scratch them and some of them teed with diarrhea. Oh, you don't want to talk to me tonight. Some of them teed with fever. Come on, mothers. Come on, fathers. Present fathers. Responsible fathers. Talk to me tonight. You wish you could take away the pain that you see your child going through. Have you ever heard your baby groan when they're having diarrhea? Oh, Jesus. And you hear that little baby go, mm -hmm. On you when you hold them close as a mother you wish to God you could take that pain but after <laughs> that child starts to push out the first teeth and the rest of teeth start follow I'm giving you a revelation here you recognize that it was a part of the process because none of us don't want a gum a a toothless child. We don't want a gummy bear. <laughs> we don't want a child that has no teeth in their mouths. So you understand that this pain that the child went through was a part of the process. Some of them teeth with rash. Which is a whole nother. Oh God, help me, Holy Spirit. Which is another trauma to that child because they don't understand the changes in their body this is what god says to me growth comes with changes growth comes with pain somebody send up a praise in this house somebody send up your worship in this house stay with me watch me this is what he said to me now and I hope I still have time. <laughs> he said to me that, listen, <clears throat> the air bubbles have to go out of your vessel so that there won't be any weak spot in your vessel. <laughs> church, church, nice tonight, man. So that there won't be any weak spot in your vessel. Somebody asked me why. Why, prof? Why? 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 Listen. This is so that the potter can use you. If the weak spots are not removed... You can't help anybody else. Can't help anybody else. Cannot help anybody else. Because the mess you're going through, you put it on them. Mm. Yes, it's true. Watch me. Some of we don't want to pray this prayer. But somehow we really need to pray and say, Lord, if you've got to hurt me to heal me, 
then do it. Lord, if you have got to hurt me, to heal me, then do it. Some of we need a mallet to start beat out the weak spots, the weak areas in our vessel, in the clay. It, it needs to be removed so that you can be fit for the master's use. Watch me. Some of we need God to really beat us, to bless us. See, everybody stop saying amen. I can't see, but I'm assuming. Some of us need to get to a place wherein we allow God to beat out the weak spots in us. Can I tell you that if you're always offended by people's words, that everything, every little bit of thing will bother you? Everything will bother you. You have to reach to a place in a Christendom where you become as hard as a turtle. Your shell has to be hard to withstand the blows of the enemy, to withstand the arrows of the enemy, to withstand the attacks of the enemy. Turkle shell not easily break. <laughs> yeah I'm saying it <clears throat> that's where we need to get to watch me if you have to knock me down God to pick me up then make me a vessel of honor because I am yours Lord make me a vessel of honor because I'm yours Lord watch me Somebody needs to ask God to use them. But when you ask God to use you, can I help somebody tonight? You have to prepare to go through some stuff. And that's the problem in Christendom. Nobody wants to go through anything. <clears throat> Anything that looks difficult, anything that seems mundane, anything that seems hard, anything that seems, you know, like it's not moving at your pace. God, I don't want this. No, 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 no. We're not doing this, God. But do you know that when you ask God to use you, it means that you are surrendering <clears throat> all of you and say, God, whatever it is that you see fit, I'm willing to do it. Now, in becoming a vessel of honor, and I know some of you tore my crush tonight, you have to drop sin out of your life. You have to get rid of the sinful lifestyle. What am I saying? You can't serve God and mammon. It don't work like that. Can't want power. Can't want prophesy. Can't want minister. Can't want to do the things of God. But you're still in the bed of adultery. You're still in the bed of fornication. You still lie. You still think. You still cuss. You still malice. You still backbite. You still jealous. You still angry. You still bitter. No. Still I visit the barnyard. But you want God to use you. Uh, church get quiet now. It don't work like that. My, my mother always tell me growing up. No sanky, no sing so. It doesn't work like that. Believers. People of God. Unsaved. It don't work so. You can't come to church Sunday and Saturday night you are in the dance hall. It no works so. Mm. I might lose some of you right now, but I have to tell you the word. You can't be up in the club 
Friday, Saturday night, Thursday night. But Sunday morning, you're in church because you need a blessing from the Lord. It don't work so. Can't be watching pornography the night before, but get up Sunday morning to preach. Who you're fooling? Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Hide and a smoke, same way. Still a drink your liquor, but you see him. Who you fooling? It don't work so. You see, my Bible tells me that his eyes go to and fro this earth, beholding the good and the evil. Which means that what your bishop, your pastor, your leaders, your prophet, your apostle, your ministers, your evangelists, your missionaries, your deacons may not see, but God see you. Ah, Jesus, help me in this place. It don't work, so Papa. It don't work, so Mommy. Oh, you want God to bless you. And you want fame and glory in the ministry. But you refuse to give up your own will. To do the will of God. But God must bless your mess. Where you get that? Show me the scripture. It don't work like that. It's not one foot in, one foot out, mommy. It's not one foot in, one foot out, puppy. No, 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 no. It's a surrendered life. I preached that message before, broke me. The Lord said, it's a surrendered life. It means even when I don't like you, I have to love you because God said it. Oh, church, quiet now. You... Only love some people, but you don't love others. But you're a servant of God. Oh, that work. How? How? Somebody explain it to me. I love God, but you can't love your children. Explain it to me. You can't love your children, but you love God. Talk to me. You don't love your spouse. You don't love your husband. Or you don't love your wife, but you love God. Talk to me. Mm. Oh, I feel God. Rimando. Yay. Jesus. But God is God. But you love God. I don't understand it. I, I can't comprehend it. It doesn't work like that church. When you surrendered, you surrendered. When you surrendered, when you surrendered, when you surrendered, when you're surrendered, it's not my will, God. But let your will be done in me. It's not what I want to do, God. But let your will be done in me. Can I tell you, I fought God to and kneel to get saved. <laughs> I fought him. I, I, church, I fought God to get saved. Because... I had issues. I had issues. And I was saying that, how is this going to work? But can I tell you when you have an encounter? <laughs> you see, I tell people I didn't get saved naturally. He came for me in my bedroom. 
and I was under curfew for hours and my face came to me as the ancients of days. Eyes red as blood. Hair white as wool. <laughs> and the nail scar was in his hand and he stretched it and said, come. And after that, I had no control over my body for hours. That's how I met him. I had an encounter with God. And that's why I say to people, I cannot do some things because I fear him. To be a vessel of honor, your flesh has to die. Your will has to die. Your mind frame, how you think, how you behave has to die. It's a sacrificial love. Oh, nobody don't want to talk to me tonight. It's a sacrificial love. Watch me. Hmm. Prepare when you ask God to be used to go through hell. He will beat on you to humble you. Humble your church. He will beat on you to get you to be humbled. Because some of us, our chest too high. I am so and so now. And I am so and so. And I know so and so. And I rub shoulders with so and so. You're not humble. But you want to do the, the miraculous. But you're not humble. Some of you won't even kneel in church anymore. Oh, what, why, why is God doing this tonight? You won't kneel anymore because you are so up here. Kneeling down no work for you. Why am I going down here tonight, God? But help me. Some of you, when last you prostrate on the altar. When last have you gone to the threshing floor so God can tread upon you and beat out the ear bubble. Get rid of the, uh, the tear that is in you. When last have you gone to God in sackcloth and ashes? Help me, Holy Ghost. Watch me. Paul said, a messenger of Satan buffeted me in my flesh. God will humble you. I whom may I talk to tonight? God will humble you. God will humble you. Paul said, a messenger of Satan buffeted my flesh and he went to God this had me laughing what did God say my grace is sufficient to keep you why God, God had to humble Paul <laughs> God had to humble Paul some of you what you're going through is to humble you because someone with the chest too high up yes, sir. God, if you bring it down a notch, man, bring you down too high, too proud, too boastful, too boastful. God resisted the proud, but he gave it more grace unto the humble. Have you ever heard some people talk, church of God? When they don't talk, you feel so bad because you can hear the boasting that is coming out. No level of humility. Nobody no want to talk about them days when they used to suffer because, oh, I'm, I'm too far up now and my past is my past. The devil lie. I will always hey, remember my days 
with my one jean skirt. <laughs> I'm a push those slippers. You know, I'm a talk to you. I will always remember my days a sugar dumpling. Why? Because it keeps me humble. It keeps me grounded. It makes me remember that God didn't have to do it. And I'm still nowhere yet. Let me just be real. But I'm not where I used to be. Somebody don't hear me tonight. <laughs> Some of we too proud. We don't remember where God had taken it from. When all we used to eat was banana and butter. Dumpling and butter. Because we, have, we are so and so now and we're tickled this and tickled that. We don't remember who we were. We don't remember how it used to feel like when we used to walk before God blessed us with a vehicle. We don't remember what it was like when we used to have to pay rent before we had a house because we have, bec we have become so proud. You don't want me to talk to you tonight. Hmm. Jesus. Hmm. Paul said, and you can look it up when you're through, lest I should be exalted above measure. That's what Paul said. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Some of you forget when you did there, Jamaica. Or when you used to live a country and your name come upon it. <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ. Some of you forget where you are coming from. Don't let people trick you into believing that you must not remember your past. Your past is what make you. It's a part of who you are today. But people will say, oh, don't testify about your past. Tandere. You overcome the devil by the word of your what? By the word of your what? Your testimony. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and by the word of your testimony. Some of you forgot that. Stay with me. Paul said, lest I should be exalted above measure. God will send some stuff in your life to humble you. Have you ever did the best church of God that you could do? But it still didn't work in your favor. <laughs> yeah, I come to mess with your head tonight. Because I want to help some people. I may not come for everybody on here. But some people need help tonight. Have you ever did the best that you could ever do? But it still did not work in your favor. Until you get sick. Or your kids get sick. You don't know that you have faith. In that. Majority. Until you've seen someone that you love become real ill. You've never known the measure of faith. That you could ever have. Until some people walk out of your life. You don't know how much strength you had in you to live until some people walk away and you had no other option but to live because you refused to die. The vessel was marred in the hands of the potter. It was marred. It became misshapen. It became imperfect. Oh, and I'm sorry for the perfectionist on here tonight. But the vessel became imperfect while in the hand of the potter. Not outside. But while he or she was in the hand of the potter, the vessel became imperfect. That bothered me. Because I had to ask God why. Why would you allow? Why would you allow? 
Why would you allow the vessel to become marred in your own hands? Not in the pastor's hand, the bishop's hand, the prophet's hand, the apostle's hand, the minister, the evangelist. No, 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 no. Not in their hands, but while in your hand. Watch me. This is what he said to me that troubled me. It's in the potter's hand. And it still has issues. <laughs> Church of God, did, did you hear me tonight? The vessel is in the potter's hand, but it still has issues. Does that make any sense? Yes. It makes a whole lot of sense. Because it's saying that not because you are in God's hand mean you don't have issues, mean you don't have struggles, mean you don't have flaws, mean you don't have weaknesses, mean you don't have sicknesses, but you're still in the potter's hand. Watch me. Even in the potter's hand, things can go wrong. Oops. Did she say that? Yes, she did. Even in the potter's hand, and I want you to type it. Even in the potter's hand, things can go wrong. Wow. 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 Yes. What are some of the things that can go wrong in the potter's hand? Temptations come. I did say temptations, yes. Trials come. Disappointment come. Embarrassment come. You may lose some people. You may lose some stuff. All while in the potter's hand. Watch me. Every turn of the wheel, this is what got me, makes the blemish more visible. <laughs> listen to me. I fell out on the floor. When, listen, you know, <laughs> and I hope some people getting this tonight. Every turn of the wheel. You hearing me tonight? Let me repeat it. Every turn of the wheel makes the blemish on the vessel more visible. So prophalaya tell. No, analay me tell a true. What is God saying? <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Every time a change happens, every time a trial comes, every time something comes at you, the blemish that is on your vessel becomes more visible. <laughs> Let me prove it to you. Holy Spirit of God. The Bible said that the clay was in the potter's hand, the vessel, but it was marred. So he could see that the vessel had issues. It was marred in his hand. The more he turned it on the wheel, is the more visible, the weak spot is showing. Let me let that soak a little. <laughs> the more the potter turns the wheel, is the more visible the blemish becomes. Ask yourself this question tonight, is God turning my wheel? Hmm. <laughs> Holy Spirit of God. 
is my wheel being turned? I said on the last taping, the higher the monkey climb, and the more bottom exposed. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The deeper you go in God is the more of yourself that will be revealed. Is the deeper your layers will be peeled off. Have you ever tried peeling an onion? The more you go around the onion ring, taking off the layers, layer by layer by layer. And the longer you're there with the onion, I go on, I go on, I go around, is the more you start crying, the more the tears coming down your eye. Because you're getting to the depth of the thing. And the depth of it, the deeper you get to it, is the stronger the scent comes up. The more layers you peel away, is the stronger the scent becomes. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Watch me. A small crack in your vessel doesn't mean that you are broken. But it means that you were put to the test, but you didn't fall apart. Some people tonight have a crack in their vessel. <laughs> Want me to repeat that? Let me repeat it. A small crack, not a big one. A small crack in your vessel doesn't mean that you have been broken, but it does mean that you were put to the test, but you didn't fall apart. Somebody clap your hands and give him glory. Now, this is what happens while you are serving God. The blemish... Your faults become more visible because you are still spinning on the potter's wheel. I said to a couple that I was counseling about marriage. I said to them, marriage will not fix your issues. As a matter of fact, it will expose them even more. Because now you're coming together with someone who there's a friction taking place, uh, rubbing, uh, you know, both of you coming together, friction, there's a rubbing, so that person is tearing away layers of you that you didn't even know were there, so things are going to start popping up that you didn't even know you had issues with, but because that person is now in your life, they will bring out pieces of you that you didn't even know exist. You're still on the potter's wheel. You are still on the potter's wheel. Nothing is hidden from the potter's eyes. So all your shortcomings, all your flaws, all your failures, all your fears, the potter knows them, he can see them. When we mess up, it's normally a thing for believers where sometimes they don't want to come back. They're, they're too embarrassed. They're ashamed to return to the body of Christ. But do you know the potter knows that you have blemishes? Do you understand that he knows that you have imperfections, but he does not throw us out? He said to Jeremiah, cannot I do, cannot I do with you as this potter? Verse 6, say the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. So if I can fix the vessel, if I can beat out the ear bubbles, if I can tread out the stone and get out the mud out of the 
clay to make it a vessel of honor. Why do you think that God cannot heal you? Why do you believe that God cannot fix you? Why do you think that you have drifted so far that God cannot restore you? Come on, people of God. You mess up, get up. You falter, get up. You slip up, get up. Because you serve a God who is a resurrector. He said to Ezekiel, can these bones, oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord God of Israel. He said, breathe. 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 Prophesy to the four winds. Prophesy into the atmosphere. Prophesy. Speak the word. And the Bible said that they all began to line up. Sinews upon sinews. Bone begin to panic to bones that were all over the place. What was God showing Ezekiel? That even though my people are scattered, oh, their bones are all over. They're not connected. <laughs> they're my malfunction. They're out of place. You know, hear me, church of God. Prophesy. Call the dry bones to come alive. Speak. Rus na na na. Because nature knows your voice. The atmosphere knows your voice. Can I prove it to you? <laughs> hey, Baba Bando, Rorobo, Shaya. Jesus. The Bible said that Jesus was on a ship. And a storm arose. Boisterous. That would have killed them. The Bible said that Jesus rose up. And said, Peace. Be still. And the waves and the water had to obey him. You don't hear me. He sent Moses down to Egypt. And he said to tell Pharaoh. Let my people go. You don't hear me in this house. Some of you need to be ba -ba -ba -ban -ro 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 -shaya. begin to speak to your situation and release a word in the atmosphere. Open your prophetic mouth. Open your prophetic mouth. Oh, na -na -na -na. your prophetic mouth and speak a word in the atmosphere. Watch me. Cannot I do with you, O host of Israel? As I have done with this clay, with this vessel. God showed me this. He said, even though you have imperfections, I know them. When they're hidden from man's eyes, I'm all knowing, I'm all seeing. So I know them. But I still choose to use you. What a great God. Watch me. Many persons didn't start out well in the Bible. <laughs> and sometimes the Bible is amusing. I don't know for anybody else. But sometimes it's amusing to me. It has some of the best information you could ever find. Some great stories as well. But he says that many Persons didn't start out well in the Bible, but they ended well. You ever thought about that? That how you start is not how you're going to finish? And that you shall finish well? The problem was with the vessel. He, the potter, can see the problem. He can see when the problem started. When the problem arises. 
who started the problem. But then he decides to make us over again so that we can be usable. So that we can be of value. So that we can be of worth. These steps are normally painful. They are normally embarrassing. They normally hurt you to your core. Yeah, people don't want to talk about God to say that, you know, you will have to go through some stuff. He said to Joseph, he showed Joseph a vision. Joseph saw sheaves bowing down before some other sheaves. And he went and he told his family, told his parents. And they said, are you saying that we are going to bow down to you? God showed him the ending of the thing. But he didn't show him the process to get there. He never showed him that he would be betrayed by his own. That he would be sold out. That he would be put in a pit. And from a pit to a prison. And from a prison into Potiphar's house. And then, he never showed him that. All of that would have taken him to the palace. He only showed him the end of the thing. You may question tonight, but why would God do that? God was going to use him to deliver his people, Israel. Because, because he went into that land at that point in time. When famine came on the land... He was able to provide his people with corn, with grain, with substance. But God never tell him that he would have to go through pain. God never tell him that his own would hurt him so deeply and so badly. But what did God have to do? As I said before, Joseph had to be healed properly so that he did not mess up what God was about to do. That he had to name his child Manasseh, meaning that the Lord has, um, the I have forgotten, sorry. I have forgotten or the Lord has forgotten. Forgive me if I forget. There's a lot in my head. But the name that he gave that child was to prove that, listen, I have forgotten I have forgotten what my brothers and sisters have done to me. They meant it for evil, but God turned it around for my good, for our good, and for his glory. So you may not start out well, but you will end well. The problem was with the vessel. It wasn't with God. He doesn't want to destroy you by wounding or embarrassing you. But he wants to get the best out of you. And sometimes the wound is what humbles you. <laughs> he wants to bless you so that he can use you. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Meaning continually. <laughs> Most times we put people in authority who have not been processed as yet. Clever enough to get through by their skill or their giftings but not really developed to understand that God is making them into a vessel. Watch me. There are going to be tough times, church of God, when God decides to use you. You're going to face rejection like you have never seen it before. And you'll wonder why. But if they rejected your father, why wouldn't they reject you? And you're his. 
You will face opposition like you have never seen. You'll be lied on, talked about, misunderstood, mistreated, called out of your name. People will disrespect you. The good you do for others will never be speaking of only evil. But don't worry, you're still in the potter's hand. God knows all of your faults. And it's better to confess to God rather than to mess up. It's best to go before God and say, God, I have a weakness. Help me. God, there's a weak spot right here. So may I ask you to you use your mallet and beat it out. It's better to come clean before God than to be exposed. There's a little saying that be sure your sins will find you out. He sees your flaw, but he won't throw you away. He fixes the flaw. He fixes the dent. He fixes whatever is damaged in you. He doesn't throw the clear away. Because he knows what he has invested in you is too much to just throw it aside. When he digs up the clay and it goes through the process of being prepared, it is no too valuable. Too much has been invested in you for God to throw you out. And this is what I love about God. He's patient. Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. You may not church of God tonight. Stay with me. You may not have gone to a physical prison. But can I be real with all of us tonight? That we all have a record. <laughs> Not all of us may have a, a record, a prison record. But all of us have a record in heaven. Revelation 20 verse 12 says, and, and let's just go there real quick. And I'm coming down, don't worry. Revelation 12. Revelation 20, sorry. Verse 12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So now you understand why he said in Jeremiah 18 that, listen, if it is they choose not to walk in my paths that I have left for them, and if they choose to do evil, then he said in verse 16, I will make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. And I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. What is God saying? I know your deeds. 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 And it's time for the church of God. It's time for us to repent. It's time for us to take note of the time that we're in. It's time for us to recognize the seasons that we're in. It's time to ensure 
that we walk in the narrow way. Because the Bible said that there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. There's a broad road and there's a narrow road. Which road you take is dependent on you. It's dependent on your decisions. It's dependent on where you are going. Watch me. He says, even though I know all of your ills, I know you have a record. And some of us pretend in church like we ain't got no record. You know, we never do anything wrong. We're always innocent. You know, it's always the other person. You know, even when you can see, you can be real with yourself. I said, no man, something's in on me. Yes, the person you have some issues with you. But I have some things that I need to get healed and delivered from. It's just that person alone have issues. You're fine. Come on, church of God. Watch me. All of us have a record. Sometimes the clay will get hard and the potter has to shelf it. This just messed me up. Sometimes the clay becomes hard. It's not pliable anymore in the potter's hand. It's not willing to do the potter's will. It's not willing to go the extra mile. It's not willing to be obedient. It's not willing to be submissive. It's not willing to stop rebelling. It becomes hard. And the potter has to shelf it. Put it on the shelf. And say, you know what? I'm not going to use you. Go over there. <laughs> When this happens, when this happens, you have to either go back through the process or one. You have gone to a point in your Christianity where you don't or you can't lose your salvation so easily I know I got you a little bit messed up but listen <clears throat> you are not at the point where you are weak anymore to certain sins and certain stuff but you can lose your usefulness that sounds weird, right? Yes, let me explain. God will take another piece of clay and start molding it. Now, when God has shelved you because you become hard, don't hate on those that God are using in this season. Have you ever seen some people? I used to hear preachers preach about them. When I just got saved, the people then will say, I needed help build a church. And I me put that block here so. And we used to rub the floor when the floor did red, green, and white, and blue. You know, some people call them old raccoons in church. Wherein they have run their race. And now they have been shelled. You know, because they can't go that more. They, can, they don't have the strength. They don't have the energy to do what a young person might be able to do. And because they have been now been shelled, they begin hating on the younger generation. Hating on the young people. Criticizing them. Tearing them down. Not empowering them to say, I see what you're doing and I think you're doing a good job. Continue on the path that you're on. I'm praying for you and I'm covering you. Continue, man of God. Continue, woman of God. But instead, they begin to pull you down because they have now been shelved and God is using you. Stop it. Don't hate on the young people. 
that God is raising up in this generation. Remember, it was already prophesied that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall have open visions. So it is already prophesied. It's a must. You can't carry the button with you. You have to let it go so that somebody else can run the race. Stay with me. You have several types of vessels and I'm, I'm coming down. Hard vessels that have gone through all sorts of storms, but they are still standing. <laughs> Do I have any of those vessels on here tonight? Just send up a hallelujah. These are called hard vessels that have gone through storms, but they're still standing. Then you have soft, delicate vessels. These are the pretty vessels that you can't get too much out of them. And if you drop them, they will break, they will fall apart. If you hurt them, you, you, have, you have, have some fancy vessel in your house where you don't want to pick them go near because they're expensive and they're just so pretty. Everybody comes in, they admire them and they're like, oh, where did you buy that? And I love that. That is so beautiful. You have some of these vessels in church. They can't take pressure. And if you drop them, they're easily broken, destroyed forever. You have some vessels in the church that if you don't like them, they'll leave the church. If they aren't leading and in charge, they're angry. These are vessels. Some of these are in the church. You have some vessels that went through temptations, but they're still standing. And you have some vessels that go through sunshine, rain, good times, hard times, ups and downs, underground, sometime on the ladder, sometime on the staircase. Talked about, lied on, mistreated, rejected, abused, misunderstood, but they're still standing. Still standing as vessels of honor. Some people that were cast aside, threw a roadside. You must see some people throw away some stuff and you're saying, oh, they throw that away, you know? Because the thing looked pretty to you, looked valuable, but in their eyes, it had no more use to them. It was no longer valuable. You have some of these persons in church. That person just, shh. Because in their mind, that person was no longer valuable. But they're still standing. Some of these vessels are still in church. God has made them so strong that nothing can break their will. Nothing can destroy their testimony about the love of God. Why? Somebody asks me why. Why? Why is that, Prof? Because they were made from a different material. <laughs> they're not mud. They're clay. Some of you tonight have gone through a period where the enemy has done everything in his power to break you, but you're still standing. He has done everything in his power to mar you while you're in the potter's hand, but you're still standing. Evil was done against you. Oh, but you're still standing. Persons disappointed you left you for dead but you're still standing 
you lost some people that you loved dearly. And when they left your life, you thought that that was the end of you. But God beat it out your ear bubble. Jesus Christ. And you're still standing. Some of you all from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship broken. But you're still standing. Some of you have a small crack. <laughs> but you're not destroyed. Pressed on every side. But still not destroyed. Persecuted. But still not destroyed. Gone through hell and back. But still not destroyed. Lord Jesus, they dropped your vessel and thought that you were one of the pretty vessels. Whereas you drop, you just have a shatter. But you're still standing. If you left church, I am begging you tonight to give your heart back to God. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to come back, come home, prodigal daughter. Come home. Prodigal son, return unto your father, Jesus Christ, because he knows your faults and he wants to fix your brokenness. He wants to mend your broken pieces. He wants to deliver you oh, from your brokenness. He wants to mend you. Oh, somebody don't hear me. You need to let go the hurt. You need to let go the pain. You need to let go the disappointment. You need to let it go. You need to forgive. You need to forgive. You need to forgive, says the Holy Ghost. So that God can use you. So what if they walked out on you? So what if you got divorced? You're still alive. You're still standing. You're still alive. Somebody not hear me tonight, you know. So what if they divorced you? You're still alive. If they took the name, you still have the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody don't hear me tonight. Jesus Christ. I want to help somebody that has lost hope. Don't commit suicide. Don't take your life. There's hope in Jesus. I said the potter knows every part of you that is crooked. The potter knows the parts that need to be straightened. And he loves you. I'm here to tell you about the love of Jesus Christ. That even when men would have cast you out. He says I have need of you. The master has need of you. The makuta katata has need hey, of you tonight. Broken, but not destroyed. Jesus Christ. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Perplexed, perplexed. Lord Jesus, trouble on the left. Trouble on the right. Oh, church people rising up against you. Other leaders coming up against you. But the blood still has miraculous power to deliver you. You don't hear me tonight. I'm here to tell you tonight that it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how low you have been brought to. The potter wants to put you back together again. There's healing in Jesus. Can I tell you that God is a healer? Can I tell you that God is a mender? Can I tell you that he's a bomb in Gilead? Can I tell you that he can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities? Can I tell you the that God interprets every tear? That every groan, he can feel it. Jesus Christ.
Can I tell you that tears are a language that only God understands? Can I tell you that you're crying now? That even though your starting was bad, you shall finish well. Can I prophesy to you tonight that even though your start was messed up, that you shall finish well. Can I prophesy to you tonight, Riba Kondo Robo Shaya, that your dry bones, your dead bones shall live again? Can I tell you that your Lazarus, Iba Kondo Robo Shata, is hopping out of that grave? Can I tell you that the grave clothes is being torn off of you? Can I tell you that God has sent his angels to loose you and let you go? Ropokoto, Hey, Jesus. Nakutoto, snako robo shaya. Jesus. Can I tell you that this sickness is not unto death? Ah, uh, will somebody hear me tonight? Jesus Christ. I'm not telling you something I never experienced. Rima mamando robo shaya. Can I tell you, Robo Kosata, that I went to death's door? Oh, Jesus Christ, when I miscarried, Rebe Koshanda, my blood pressure dropped so low that I was before the nurse's station because anything could have happened. But the devil didn't know the God in whom I serve, Reba Koshata, that when it's not your time, no witchcraft, no obia, no sorcery, no necromancy, no black magic. No white magic, no seance, no witch, no wizard, no warlock, no lodge, no power. Hey, can take you out before your time. Somebody don't hear me tonight. Jesus Christ. Hey, Rababando Robosaya. No matter how much freezer they put you in. Jesus Christ. If you try and hold you in a one position. Lord Jesus, God boss that. I said it boss up. I said boss up. I said boss, boss. Boss, boss. Boss, boss up. In the name of Jesus. I don't care how much padlock they put by you. I said, God have the key. <laughs> Jesus, oh, yeah. I said, God of the key. I said, God of the master key. I said, we know the master. We know the one that calms the storm. We know the one that stills the water. We know the one that walk out on the water and it had to hold him up because nature knew his rank. Nature knew his rank. Nature knew his rank. Hey, Jesus, you don't want to hear me tonight. I'm here to speak life into a dead situation that you shall live again, that you shall bud again, that you shall spring forth again, that you shall arise again. That this is not the end of you, but it is your process. Somebody worship the Lord in this place. Mazunga zinga rebebebe kosata. Rapapapapa kosata. Jesus. For the persons who were not online before when I went in on prior. I just want to speak to somebody on here who is not yet saved. Who doesn't know Jesus. As your Lord and Savior. I want to introduce you to him. I want to introduce you to my father. I want to introduce you to my friend. I want to introduce you to a friend that stick it closer than a brother that when others forsake you and write you off that he will never leave you nor forsake you I want to introduce you to my husband man who has been providing for me I want to introduce you to my healer who has been there for me oh Jesus Christ I want to tell you about a God that turned my circumstances that turned my situation around I want to tell you about a God Oh, Robo Koshaya, that even when I didn't love him, he loved me. Can I tell you about Baba Koto Robo Bobo Saya, a father, that if you're fatherless, he will be your father. Can I tell you about somebody that mothered me? Oh, Jesus Christ. Can I tell you about Riba Koshen Rebe Koshaya, my savior? 
if you're not saved tonight, pray this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now, God. I repent of all my sins. I confess that I have sinned against you. And I ask you for forgiveness. Wash me afresh, oh God. Make me over again. Burn through me, Spirit of the living God. I pray even now, Jesus, that God you will forgive the sins of my forefathers. Generational sins, ancestral sins. Sins, oh God, inherited through my bloodline. Forgive me right now, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to tell him tonight that in the name of Jesus, I believe with my heart and confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, that God had raised him up from the dead and that he's alive and well. I give my heart my mind, my body, my soul, and my spirit unto Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. I confess tonight that only he is my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have prayed that prayer tonight, then it means that you have given your heart to Jesus. You can contact Deacon Wade afterwards to, you know, have him go through with you as to when you can go through the level of baptism. But I'm here to talk to a backslider as well tonight. It's time to come back home. It's time to renew your covenant. It's time to renew your vows with God. Because remember, he said that he's a covenant-keeping God and that he's married to the backslider. So I ask you to return, to return, to return, to return to your spouse tonight. Bride of God. Bride of God, return to your groom. The bridegroom is coming again. The bridegroom is coming again. The bridegroom is coming again. Be ready for him. The bridegroom is coming again. The bridegroom is coming again. Bride of Christ, be ready for him. Be ready for him. Be ready for him. Be ready for him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I now hand you over to Deacon. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, prophetess. Thank you. Thank you very much for allowing the Lord to use you Jesus. to speak his word tonight. Um, unlike the last time, all I have to add right now is just one word. As you were there, as you, I, I, as you were going on, I was right. There was so much. I wrote down so much of what the Lord said. To you, to all those who are watching tonight, there are many persons who are tuned in from all over the world. But what came to me strongly, and I'll just say this, is the Spirit of God said to me that this is a Matthew 8, 8 moment. This is a Matthew 8 Eight moment where the, where the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou let's come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. There, there has been a lot of power on the broadcast tonight. Many lives have been healed. Glory. Marriages, many families, purpose has been birthed. Jesus. Ministries have been birthed. Yes. So much thing has been released. There is no growth without pain. Jesus. My mind. There, there is, let me just touch on, on, on this part that you that, that that you mentioned tonight that the Spirit of God sp spoke through you. Um the crushing of the grapes. 
the formation of diamonds under great heat and pressure. Yes. The development of in a dark room. Yes. And you said to them that the, the pressing of the olives is what produces the oil. The darkness, the pain that somebody's going through is not their final bus stop in the that name of Jesus. Jesus. So I declare this broadcast as a Matthew 8, 8 from start to finish. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Woman of God, the Lord bless you. Bless you. Now, I know when the Spirit of God says speak little and when he says speak a lot. And <laughs> right now that's all I am led to say. It's a Matthew 8, 8 moment. The, I pray the, the blessing of the Lord upon you, upon your ministry. I declare you shall not be lower than this level for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. Jesus. I hear Isaiah 40, 28 to 30 over your life. Mounting up with wings as eagle. Run and not be weary. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak it over your life. And as you have spoken the word and you have touched many in Jamaica, you have touched many in the Caribbean, Many in the U.S., many in the U.K., in Canada, I declare over your life that as you have given this word, it shall come back to you a hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Thank you. It was good to just sit back and listen to you speaking the word of God. And I know everyone on this live is saying amen. And I invite you all to pray for the woman of God. Pray the blessing of God upon her. And as I said, uh, when I started, before I introduced her, that the Bible declares in Ephesians chapter 4, from verse, uh, from verse 11, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The Lord bless you, woman of God. Thank you. To God pleasure. be all the glory. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being with you tonight. And thank you for availing yourself for God to use you. Amen. And we know that we have always thought the way up is down. Amen. And as you love, you love knee city. So therefore, the more you spend that knee city, the more you are going up in the name of Jesus. Amen. For God, for the and glory. All of, you, for all of you who are viewing, I just speak over your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yes, the Lord Lord. lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And if there's anybody who has decided to follow Jesus Christ, you can use the same Facebook platform and send a message and we will get in contact with you. The Amen. Lord bless you and we'll see you again. God bless you, prophetess. God bless, bless you, everyone. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Yeah.